Hey, Composer Gloves here, and this is the eighth video in the Harmer from the Ground Up tutorial series. And today we're going to be talking about the prism setting. Woo! So first, go to a default patch, because I just don't do that. You'll notice that my stuff up here is a complete mess. It moves around because I've been having... I could split my screen in half and do other things while I'm working on something else. Like... Uh, like for example, I could be reading the manual for reactor while working on reactor on the same screen. I have a really big screen so I can, so that's actually not that bad. But, uh, as a result, it pushes all my stuff around. It's so annoying having to put it all back. Anyways, that was like a complete waste of your time. So, uh, let's talk about the prism. So we know from the first video that there is an index or frequency domain. Uh, so all these frequencies... And the way they derive these frequencies is there's an equation and actually, you know, this is my guess, but according to what I know about the prism effect, I'm assuming this is some of the process. There's probably a lot more to it. Well, in fact, there, there most certainly is a lot more, but there's a fundamental frequency. And then these frequencies get their position based off the relationship to the fundamental. And uh, you could imagine it like they're on a graph and each one has like its own line on where it is in relation to this first one. And this prism effect basically manipulates that relationship. So it'll put in like, let's say the variable from this relationship from uh, the fundamental to the first harmonic is like two. You multiply it by two and you get the second uh, harmonic. Actually, I think it's like a, no, is it an octave? I think it may be an octave. So that might actually be accurate. Um, or it might be a fifth. That could be totally wrong. But anyways, if you move this, well, you just said, oh, make it like a negative point, like make it po negative point two, uh, negative two point two five or something. And you make it like more drastic and it'll bend the harmonics that way or it will bend them the other way. Now, add mode uh, adds the that ratio. Now, I don't know nearly enough math to honestly say exactly what these things are doing. I'm trying my very best to get up to grips with uh, what this does. But anyways, that's far farther beyond the scope of these tutorials anyways. But this this will apply it using an adding technique. So if we uh, so just let's hit a note and let's see it happen. We're going to be adding the uh, difference in the variables. So we hit some notes. And you see it just moved them. Some of them go up, some of them go down. I don't know the original equations. Okay, I didn't make this stuff up. But when it me leaves the ratio, we get sort of these kind of weird machine-like textures. A lot of people will call stuff like this metallic. So if you ever see read something that says, oh, it sounds metallic, this is what they're talking about. See, to me, I didn't think this sounded metallic. Like, to metallic, uh, metallic to me sounded like different. So this sounds like machines. And for me, machines and metallic are very different. But, you know, if you ever read it, like in FM synthesis, they say that a lot. Like, oh, if you do this, it'll sound more metallic. If you move the partials off of their original relationship to the fundamental, I'm like, whatever. It sounds like machines to me. Anyways. So that's what it does. And then if you go multiply, it'll now multiply. And I'll see very different behavior. And again, I don't know the equations. So some of them go up, some of them go down. This one's quite a bit more dramatic, I think. Now, I think when you go the other way, it ap applies a negative harmonic because it's a negative percent. And you can totally go up or down. Like, there's no reason why you can't have uh, the frequencies go up or down. Unless you're, like, leaving the spectrum, like, the hearing range. Like, you go below 20 hertz or something. But So, anyways, that's what that does. Now, you have this from volume. And this is taking... So, we talked about when we were going over the um, harmonic timber timbre man i got this saying timber thing got to get rid of that the timbre thing that there is that these harmonics actually follow brownian noise and they get cut by half in velocity every time they go up and this will take advantage of that so from volume up so the louder a harmonic is and of course we could change that by simply manipulating this graph so that's another reason why the timbre harmonic would be good but this graph i mean this from volume says when you point it up the more, the louder a uh, harmonic is, uh, the more the amount will affect it. If you hit down, the softer a harmonic is, the, or the louder a harmonic is, the less it will affect it. So it's the ac exact opposite. This one says, I don't care. Um, she could date whoever she wants. So uh, let's uh, really quick take a look at that. So this is all the way on. So our 
our lighter harmonics will be more affected and our softer harmonics won't. So we'll see this, the upper end of the spectrum is quite a bit softer. So if we hit our notes, we can totally see that's true. Look at the crazy amount of distortion here. It's up in the front end of our stuff. And if we go over down, this one got me at first because I thought it was talking about velocity sensitivity. It's totally not what it's talking about. You're going to get yourself screwed up if you do it the other way. She's going to date whoever she wants, whether or not you tell her what to do. If you, if you know what I'm saying. So this now affects the upper harmonics quite a bit more because they're softer than the lower harmonics. They don't even budge. You're like, uh, we're staying right here. We ain't going nowhere. So that is what those do. And there is an envelope for this. If you right click, you can go to edit articulator. If they ever have an edit articulator, if you click that, it'll take you right there. And we get taken to this prism amount and you can then on a, uh, what is this? An octave basis. Oh no, this is in an envelope mode. Uh, so this is an envelope. So this did happen over time, the prism amount turning on and off. Uh, so that's what that is. We talked about envelopes with the volume envelope. This one, you'd have to draw your own envelope. So you'd have to draw like an attack phase and a decay phase and stuff like that. And it would go through according to time. And you can see that amount of time up here in the little hint bar where your stuff is. Uh, this is also a grid, so it's kind of nice because you can see where your quarter notes are and where your eighth notes are and stuff. Uh, I don't... Let me see here. Hey, there's the harmonic blur amount. This is what I was looking for earlier. This totally controls the mix of the blur. And this is also an envelope. So it's a good thing we have these envelopes versus graphs down. There is another one that is affiliated with it that allows you to control the mix. It's a uh, look for their prism, prism mix, prism mix, do, 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 phaser. Anyways, there's another one and it will allow you to do essentially say only these harmonics are affected. Only those ones, only these ones, that type of deal. These are all filters. Maybe it doesn't exist. I'm always looking for these envelopes that don't exist. Oh my gosh. Um, you could tell though that it's not something like I'm like looking for all the time. Um, but yeah, so there's the articulator. So that's an option too, but that affects everything at the same time. Uh, so this would be your best bet at sculpting it unless there's an envelope, but I don't see it. The only one I can find is the prism amount. So anyways, that's that. If you have any questions, let's make a sound real quick because uh, sounds are fun. I still have that same chord progression from like the previous two tutorials. If you want to see how messed up it'll sound with this, oh man, I'll show you. So we're going to create an automation clip. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't sound that great. But you know what does sound good? Bass loves stuff like this. So we'll play some notes. And now I haven't talked about this yet, but we're going to bring down an octave. And uh, I haven't talked about this yet either, but I'm just going to do it. So we have lock. And now if we use the prism, we can easily get a Reese. And you don't want to go too far on this. If you do multiple, it gets really aggressive because we talked about that earlier. And look at this. Like, whoa, man, they're just converging into these great lines of resonance. We don't necessarily want that. Now, with it all moving like this, you might think this won't affect my pitch because my fundamental is okay, right? Well, nope. Uh, your fundamental is being moved. So if you want it to stay relative to pitch, you probably want the uh, downwards so that the things that are less, that way you're, we already, I already explained what this does, but this way your bottom end will be left untouched so it'll be closer to a harmonic texture. Just a quick note as you get moving. Um, something I I usually had problems when I used the prism because it sounded like it was totally out of tune and I'd have to move it up like a third or a half step or I'd have to figure out how out of tune it was and it was just a mess. But as you can see, that adds quite a bit of gusto. If we turn our distortion off, that's what we have. But with the distortion, it uh, adds the extra edge because without it in the distortion, we have that. So you need both. They are like friends. They are buddies. They hang out together and go eat. Uh, what is that? The t spicy tuna rolls on Tuesdays is the best way, man. If you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments. Subscribe because you love big, greasy hot dogs with ketchup and mustard on them. Unless you don't like those things, and you should subscribe because you don't like them. And you should put it that, your opinion about that down in the comments. 
and let the world know. And have a blessed day. Oh, 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 o